when I was little, I saw the original Teen Titans cartoon in 2005, and it was really good. It aired from 2003 to 2008, and it combined anime and other forms of western animation, and I've heard character pairing is the pairing between Dick Grayson, the original Robin, and Princess Coriander of Tamaran, aka Starfire. And I especially love the film Trouble in Tokyo because it actually showed the two kissing. It would take a while until we saw another Teen Titans related show. I actually like Young Justice because it showed Dick Grayson becoming Nightwing. And I was really heartbroken when Wally West, the original Kid Flash, sacrificed himself. Our prayers were, an were answered when Teen Titans Go first aired, and well, it just, it was really horrible. It was, it was bad. We could have stopped this. We could have stopped this. It's bad enough that it once took multiple time slots from Cartoon Network. The show Teen Titans Go has brought up brought upon itself a lot of criticism and contempt. Hey everyone, he Labor Kai writer Nathan here and I will be discussing the top ten reasons why Teen Titans Go is universally hated. Number ten. It replaced Young Justice. After the events of the, of Young Justice Invasion's final episode, the show was cancelled and replaced by this abomination of a superhero parody series. For some the loss of one show in favor of an inferior successor can be an extremely bitter pill to take re in reality. Not having matters much that Teen Titans Go as Teen Titans Go got farther into its run, it opted to take pot shots at the darker tone of its predecessor. I mean, and number nine, it has no epic fights fights between good and evil. If you're gonna air a superhero show, at least give it some kick-ass fight scenes where the heroes go toe-to-toe -to -toe against a dangerous bad guy or two. Take the various incarnations of Power Rangers and its Japanese counterpart, Super Sentai, where it shows the Rangers fighting against the Monster of the Week twice. Once in, in small size and once when it's gigantified. Teen Titans Go has no epic fight scenes whatsoever between heroes and villains whatsoever. It prefers to undercut epic fights for the sake of comedy, and if I wanted to watch a superhero animated purity series, I'd watch the anime series One Punch Man. Take the two-part special episode two-parter, in where the Titans are drawn into conflict against Darkseid, the and hypothetically, such an encounter with a threat-level godlike supervillain would be declared intent, dramatic and intense. But instead. The show opted for a joke about Darkseid's voice actor, which was done by Weird Al Yankovic, who voices Milo Murphy in Milo Murphy's Law, Rek Gar in Transformers Animated, and Cheese Sandwich in My Little Pony Friendship is Magic before he is defeated. Number 8. There is a distinct lack of character development. Even for a show whose grasp at community for continuity is Loose to say the least, there is still a lot, a lot, a lot to consider. There's still a lot to consider. Viewers of Teen Titans Go have, over this show's run, have grown tired over the sense that no character seems to retain any important, important lessons or personal growth. The Titans themselves fluctuate in personality based on the plots of certain episodes. A number of, a number of certain supporting characters. Three deviate established traits and even antagonists like Trigon the fucking terrible bizarrely shift without a clear given reason. Or still, some episodes still result in fairly significant status quo alterations, but it's business as usual. Come the next episode. Okay, number seven. Low quality animation. Okay, have the producers of Cartoon Network have been tripping on acid shrooms or t DMT because the animation of Teen Titans Go straight up sucks eggs. Since the show began, a lot of viewers have noticed the supposed shortcomings in the, in the visual presentation of the series. Its flat and simplistic use of color and reliance of GBS character models, etc. Folks have made clear on how cheap and uninspiring the that they find the visuals, the confusing prospect considering that multiple companies collaborate 
on the show as for industry norms. Even worse, the show's loose sense of scene continuity and the occasional explicit error may further behind qu further only further ra beyond race question raised about the money and talent behind the Munchkin Line series. Number six, a lot of plots are very poorly written. Many genres, comedy in particular, either live or die by the quality of writing, of writing on display. It's a real shame that then that Go is found to falter when it comes to the strength of its script. Right from the very first episode, the show indulges in asinine detours and strange flights of fancy that appear to exist purely for the sake of jokes. Oftentimes it results in insanely absurd episodes such as Waffles, in which the one central gag appears to own to have only been the, to have been the only justification for writing the episode of, in the first place. Whether or not one finds it funny, it is hard to see the issues inherent in inherent in this approach. Number five. It ignores criticism and feedback. The sign of a creative force is one that can take its audience, take audience critique and use it to better their craft. This tends to not be the case for Teen Titans Go, in which it ta instead takes advantage of its position to order in order to rebuff or slightly make fun of such commentary. More than once, the Titans have expressed skepticism that anyone other than children could sincerely enjoy their program, suggesting that the showrunners, the writers of themselves, may well, be of that opinion. Further, in episodes in the vein of the return of Slade crop up on the regular. Their narrative intent, apparently, to brush off the show's overall reputation, is just the opinions of misguided viewers. Number four, it takes up too many time slots. Yeah, this is another reason why Teen Titans Go is hated. The weird and wild world of car corporate oversight since the sh show's debut. Teen Titans Go has slowly began taking up greater most of the airtime on Cartoon Network before the network's DC Nation programming block ended. Its time slots were f time slots were filled entirely with Teen Titans Go episodes and uh, episodes are shown more, more more than once a day and two weeks worth of programming to be expected to be consumed by viewings of Go. Only since the release of the theatrical film Teen Titans Go to the Movies has Cartoon Network's ultra-overzoa scheduling started to rein in, but still the trend started to be reined in, but still the trend persists. Number three, it teaches bad life lessons to kids. How is Teen Titans Go superhero series again? It certainly does not fucking act like one. That's for damn sure. This show has been unfortunate, has the unfortunate habit of teaching bad life life lessons to kids. Like how, like, Christmas is being all about presents, greed is good, sexism is good, lighting is okay, etc. All of these are really bad life lessons to teach children. Number two, it mocks fans of the original Teen Titans cartoon. Ugh. As a fan of the original Teen Titans cartoon, I feel like my childhood, my fucking childhood, is taking some serious physical damage here. Controver conventional wisdom would, would dictate that it isn't a smart move to deliberately antagonize existing fans of the original 2003 to 2018 Teen Titans cartoon. Yet, Teen Titans Go and its creators have repeatedly sought to do that, using their platform to lampoon the 20 2003 series and its fan base. In some cases, a given episode will use a thinly veiled metaphor or deliberate fourth wall breaking to convey the writing team's disregard for its fan interests. Number, num finally number one, it turned the Titans into selfish, bratty huffs of their original selves. Okay, here's what they've done to the original five Titans. Dick Grayson, the original Robin, is a crazed, power-hungry, egomaniacal, bratty man-child who is overly lovesick for Starfire and is constantly being bashed and trolled on by his team, even when he's physically abusing them. Princess Coriander of Tanneran, aka Starfire, is a complete and utter putt who uses the word THE in almost every sentence. Garfield Mark Logan, aka Beast Boy, is an even bigger putt star than Starfire, as shown in Covers of Raven, where he starts with zero when counting. You don't start zero when counting, you green fucktard. Victor Stone, aka Cyborg, is overly pop cultured and is obsessed with the song The Night Begins to Shine. I listen to the song and it's not even that catchy. Rachel Roth, aka Raven, is too much of an emo, is, emo is too lazy to walk, and float, floats around like a fucking ghost, and she absolutely refuses to take off her hood. <coughs> oh, 
on reason why I prefer the original 2003 cartoon, which I hear might be returning to Adult Swim, and I am elated that Teen Titans Go! might be ending next year. Next time, I'll be discussing the top 10 reasons why Jimmy Turner's parents from SpongeBob, from, I mean, from Fairly Odd Parents, should be arrested. This is Keyblade McKay writer Nathan signing off. See ya.